For this video, I'm going to show you exactly how fast it is to create business applications using Workflow First. So I'm going to go ahead and create a help desk application from scratch. So to begin with, I click Create Application. I type in Help Desk as the name. This takes me to the application record. I'm going to click New Application tab and type in Tickets. Then I'm going to add a workflow to that tab that I just created. Um, I'll leave that as Tickets. OK, this takes me to the workflow designer. So I'm going to add a first opening stage called Enter Ticket. And that's going to be for the customer role. That will have an input field of title and another input field for description, which is going to be paragraphs text. And that's the first stage. The second stage is going to be something which goes to the um, customer service officer. They are going to optionally close the ticket with an explanation. And that'll be the end of that workflow. Another option under Enter Ticket is going to be to refer them to documentation. That's also going to be for CSO. And they will provide a URL and maybe we'll use the existing explanation field. And that'll be that one. The third option is to escalate it. If we escalate it, then it's going to go to a tech. And we'll provide some notes that can be relayed to the, um, the tech. Once the tech gets it, they are going to have an option of updating the status. That'll be a new field we're just going to call status. And once that's done, we're going to take it back to the escalate stage so they can continue doing that over and over again. And the final option under escalate is going to be to sorry, complete the ticket. Again, that's going to be for the tech role. And they can provide an explanation there. OK, that's the end of our workflow. So just to recap, they're going to enter the ticket. A CSO is going to either refer them to documentation, they may close the ticket, or they could escalate it to a tech. Once a tech gets hold of it, he's going to analyze it. He'll maybe update the status a few times. And eventually, he will complete the ticket. OK, now we can publish that and see what it's actually created for us. So I go to What's Next, I go to Publish, and click OK. OK, now I click that link. And here's our application that it created for us. Um, now you know it's a completely empty application. Obviously there's no data in there, we haven't created any tickets yet. We have our Tickets tab. We have a built-in Users tab and Configuration tab. Um, this is for the list of users, and that's for the application configuration. Um, but I'm just going to go ahead and run through the workflow that we just created, just to show it to you. Now, notice that I'm logged in as admin right now. And that means that I have complete access over the application. But I can disable that admin login or create different users so different people will see different um, lists. OK, I'll click Enter Ticket. And let's say I put here, I cannot turn on my laptop. And this will be our first ticket. That adds it into our list. It tells you that the ticket was entered successfully. And I can either enter a new ticket here, or if I was a CSO, I would see this screen, where I have the details of the ticket in front of me. I also have the options to close the ticket, to refer them to documentation, or to escalate it or optionally to send a query back to the customer, um, asking them a question, perhaps, a bit more clarification, where they will then get notified about that, then they can respond to it and continue. That's added in automatically by Workflow First. In this case, I'm going to refer them to documentation. Um, let's say I'll put Microsoft.com. Please check the Microsoft website for more information. 
That will then get sent back to the customer and that closes the ticket. Okay, I'm now going to enter another ticket and this time this time we're going to go a different round. When I type on my keyboard, the V key does not always come out. So now we have a second ticket in here. So the CSO receives this ticket and they think, well, I'm going to escalate it. Maybe he needs a new keyboard. Can you check? that gets sent to the tech. When the tech receives it, they see this record with the options of updating the status um, to complete it, or again to query the CSO to get more information. So let's say they put update status and say, uh, please bring your keyboard to my office. And then they bring the keyboard in. You see the information is filled out uh, in the record here. And then finally they can say, gave him a new keyboard and everything was okay. And that closes that ticket down. Okay, so you'll see that, you know, we get quite a lot of, quite a lot of um, functionality in, you know, just a couple of minutes of putting together this application. We already have the ability to search, for example. Um, you know, I can search for everything that's in a certain stage. Um, close ticket, for example. If there's anything in that, which there isn't, then remove, remove the filter. I can search for everything maybe that's uh, in the complete stage. And it just shows me this one here. Um, there are other filters here where you can filter it by a particular role as well if you want to. Um, or if a user is in a particular role, they will only see those those uh, records that pertain to them. Okay, so that's how you create a basic workflow application. That's just the very, very tip of the iceberg. Going back to the help desk application, you'll see that these are the tabs that we have defined in the application. We have the tickets tab, which we have our workflow in. If we expand one of these tabs, we'll see the fields that are inside it. These are the fields. So I can add fields to this if I want to, um, which are not part of the workflow, but are kept in the database so you can still see them. The same thing applies for the user's record. Here you see all of the fields that are to do with a user. You can add your own fields in there to store against the user. I'm going to add a new tab that's not going to be a workflow tab. It's just going to be called Categories. And I'm going to expand that, and I'm going to put in a field called Name. Now I'm going to edit this just to make sure um, that it's set to be mandatory, uh, that it's unique, and that it's a quick entry field as well. So the difference now is that we have a tickets tab, we have users and configuration, but we also have a categories tab, which I've just added a name field to. Let's just see what that does when I publish that. I just want to demonstrate just how versatile it is with our ability to be able to add new tabs, new forms, and it does all of the form generation and user interface for you. But you can customize your, user, the user interface. You can add skins and all kinds of things. So now we have a Categories tab at the top also. If I click Categories at the top, we have an empty list and a little quick entry line right here where we can add things very quickly. So I can put in um, computers. Um, I can add another one telephones, printers, um, I don't know, toilet, coffee machine, whatever I want to add in there I can. Now that's not much use by itself because it's just a list of categories. What I want to actually do is link that to a ticket so the ticket so the user can actually select a category when they're entering in a ticket. So I'm going to go back to our tickets tab click on workflows so I can look at our workflow designer again. And I'm going to click this button here which lets me select the input fields for the enter ticket. And we just have title and description right now. So I'm going to add a new field in here and I'm going to call it category. And now I'm going to link that using this drop down right here to the categories list that we just created. 
So now we have an additional category field. And it's right underneath description. I want it to be underneath title instead. So I'm going to pick that up and drop it right there. Okay. Now let me publish that and we'll have a look to see what that's actually changed. Go over here and refresh this. Now I can click enter ticket now and it brings up a different form because it also has the category field that we talked about earlier. So I can say in here for example no dial tone and I can select telephones. When I pick up my handset there is no dial tone. <clears throat> now the great thing about that is we can actually set up notifications that are filtered by particular categories so that only a particular type of CSO will get notification if they select telephone because maybe that's their area of expertise. That's a very easy thing to do. It's actually in the notifications area which I can show you quickly. So in the configuration tab there's an area called notifications. If you click plus on that you can select a user and then you can select um, a role that you want to subscribe to. So if I select CSO here then I'm going to receive every single notification that's related to the role CSO. And you see here there's an option that says filter for tickets. So this allows me to add a filter in so that I then only receive notifications not only for all the CSO um, all the CSO notifications but only the ones that actually pertain to the category of telephones and I could even add additional categories if I wanted to um, of course I have to define a user first before I do that but I just wanted to demonstrate that that, that is actually possible so here we've created a full help desk application and we really did it in just a couple of minutes and that's just the tip of the iceberg. You can create loads and loads of different types of workflow in here. You can create subforms underneath existing forms and add workflow to those. So you can scale out the application over thousands of forms. And some of our solutions do have thousands of forms and millions of rows of data. Um, and it scales out incredibly well. You can use it with web farms um, on a hosted site, privately on your network, uh, using SQL Server, using MongoDB, uh, all kinds of options for creating your applications. It gives you a huge number of uh, features built in as well. So that's just the tip of the iceberg. I wanted to just demonstrate how quick it is to create applications. Um, hopefully you'll check out the other videos and learn some more. Thank you very much.